through the Firebase Clicker solution. Let's start with the designer mode and look at the user interface. You see it's extremely similar to the user interface we had on the TinyWebDB version. Uh, there are a couple important differences. Uh, we had the TinyWebDB uh, uh, invisible component uh, previously, which was taken from the storage drawer. And for this version of the app, we're going to use a Firebase a DB. Notice it's not in the storage drawer, though it's in the experimental drawer. So you'll have to drag it out from there. Also, you see here the timer is gone. And the reason for that is that since Firebase tells us when the data is changed, we don't have to pull the database every three seconds. So we got rid of the timer. The rest of the interface is pretty much the same. All right, let's go over to the blocks and have a look there. And uh, we see that the uh, blocks are, are fairly similar to the blocks that we had in the TinyWebDB version of the app. We've got our agree count and disagree count global variables here. And this question variable we're going to use in one of the enhancements. It's not really used in the basic uh, solution. And then when the button uh, reset is pressed, we simply set our local counts to zero and we save the values in the database. This store DB, let's have a look at that one. You can see that the uh, previously there was a tiny web DB here, but otherwise it looks exactly the same. The blocks are pretty much the same. And whenever we store information into the database, we also update our own display to show the latest information. You see the bu button agree and button disagree are identical to what existed in the previous app. And the error handler is extremely similar, except we've got Firebase DB here instead of tiny web DB. This is the main block that's different between the two apps. And what this does is it handles the event when Firebase tells us that some of the data has changed. And, and this can be triggered not only because some other user has changed the data, but also because we ourselves have changed the data due to user action over here. Notice that this block is also fired when the app first initializes, which is kind of nice because it avoids us having to repeat all this code in an initializer block. We put in some extra hooks in here, probably not necessary, but a little bit of extra guard, just in case we get some weird thing back from the database that's not a number. Uh, we set the value to zero just to, uh, I just noticed here, this is not correct. This should say agree count, and this should say uh, disagree count. Otherwise, we're not actually doing anything. OK, and uh, that's just a little extra protection. Otherwise, whenever we get a number back from the database, we figure out what whether it was the agree number that changed or the disagree number that changed. And we just change our global variable to keep track with whatever's in the database. And once again, we update the display every time the data changes. Over here, we have the update display method. And all that's happening here is we're taking our local, uh, or sorry, I should say global account uh, variable and uh, putting it into the uh, app screen. And likewise here with the disagree variable. Uh, down here, there is some stuff that we haven't shown, which shows you how to program the thumb switches as a histogram. And we're not going to show that on this basic solution here. So that's all the code. And you can see it's actually a good deal shorter than uh, the uh, tiny WebDB solution. And the reason for that, of course, is that the data changed event handler allows us to make the app far more efficient. Mm -hmm.